Hold on to your butts. We are changing the course of history as we see it. That is what Wesker demands. Now this affects Iris. Um, Iris, where are you? What you feel only matters to you. I do not entertain hypotheticals. The world as it is is vexing enough. Iris, I have a tip for you. Don't take drugs! Or whatever movies with Wesley and Iris. Bye, man. What? <laughs> what was that? That playing with the boys song where they're all naked and sweaty. Oh, no, that wasn't sweat. That was oil. That was <laughs> intentional. <laughs> sweating was the rest of the movie. <laughs> they were sweating so much. All right, let's save this for the actual discussion. What up and welcome to Or Whatever Movies. I'm your co-host, Iris, and I am excited to introduce my brother... Top Gun Wesley. For, well, spoiler, a movie from 1986 available for a limited time on Netflix. Top Gun! Wait, that's the song you're choosing? It's so weird. That's the wrong song. (laughs) What song would you choose? Danger Zone plays no less than three times. Possibly four times. And Berlin's Take My Breath Away. It's like they only license those two songs in whatever you're singing. (laughs) Oh, and don't forget the guitar solo. That would that use that at least two or three times too. Well, yeah. Official score. All the rest have horrible connotations in my mind because they just won't stop singing poorly in the movie. Why are they singing so much? And why are they singing so badly? And why did Tony Scott allow it to happen? Are you talking specifically about loving feeling? Oh, God. And they know it and they start it a cappella. <laughs> but when you're belting, what does they call it? Pressing? Uh, Billie Eilish has like a specific word for it. Because, you know, she's always like very soft. But when you like project... You just don't have as much control. Yeah, but this is a massive budget production. It's a controlled environment. You have someone jump on the piano like Anthony Edwards did to mask the fact that nobody is singing it well. It's like Buster Scruggs. It's time to sing and some dude sits down and hops on the piano to accompany you <laughs> and cues you up. That's what needed to happen because, man, it's so Painful. awkward. It's it's authentico. When you're in a bar and you do spontaneous karaoke, that's what it sounds like, homie. <laughs> right. For all my time in the bars, I've undoubtedly found that to be true. <laughs> you know, Anthony Edwards didn't know the day that he was supposed to play piano and sing Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> he didn't know how to play piano. He had to fake it and he had to sing it. You're talking when Goose plays Great Balls of Fire for Meg Ryan? Yeah, he didn't know how to do it or play the piano. He didn't even know. He wasn't even prepared for it. (laughs) Well, he he fakes it really great. They, I think they went the whole song. (laughs) They're being they're boys being boys, Wes. This is what this entire movie is about. (laughs) Definitely. I know that that's kind of a passe thing to say, boys being boys, because what does girls being girls mean? But in a 1986 context, this is how you hit on a woman. This is how you make love to a woman. This is how you play volleyball, and this is how you sing karaoke. Top Gun is the most awkward movie of the <laughs> 1980s. For, you know, it's, it's so weird that, that they would be so precise as Navy pilots and that they would be piloting these $30 million precision aircrafts, and they'd be all about skill and, and technical perfection, and yet they were, like, all doofy and awkward. Like, you know how NASCAR drivers... They're like all about technical skill and stuff and and, and incremental increases and, and maneuvering and stuff. And they get out of the, the car and they're like, woohoo, dang, boy. Yeah. It's like this movie should have been called Yeehaw or, <laughs> or Top Wiener. Top it was, Wiener. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because it was just a perpetual dick measuring contest? Yeah. Just everything about it was awkward. The making love to a, to a woman part. Like I was cringing at the amount of like silhouetted tongue. It was just. <laughs> I yeah. noticed it this was, too. I was like, whoa, they do not make love scenes like this anymore. Ew. It was really graphic. And awkward. I mean, no nudity or anything, but it was just like, yeah. <laughs> and during the bar scene, you know, because Kelly Ray is white. And when I looked over at her when they started singing, 
and like the whole bar joins in and he's she's like sit down or whatever and they're like yay and he's like i won i did it and he sat down i looked over her and she has the biggest romantic comedy grin on her face and i was like <laughs> oh my god and she was like i would have been charmed uh, and and you did notice you noted right that they brought in the guy who actually could sing at the very end to kind of take us out of the musical number I mean, take it easy. We had black guys as ringers throughout the whole movie. It's like, okay, we got to get someone who can sing a little bit better. Okay, we got to get someone to play his Rio or whatever after he loses Goose and stuff. And so Tom Cruise can go off and like throttle him or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, when he gets all pissed, he drops his gear and then he's like, what does he say to him? I will fire when I'm ready. Goddamn good and ready. And then walks off all like five, seven Tom Cruise. You mean larger than life, Tom Cruise? Yeah. He is larger than life in this movie. Yeah, and bitty on the set. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, they, you know, they got an appropriately sized love interest and a comically sized Rio. But she even (laughs) says it. (laughs) But she says it herself. When I met you, you were larger than life. And it's true. You're t- are you talking about his Rio being the over- the comically oversized Tim Robbins, who's like 6'4 and wouldn't have fit in the cockpit of the Tomcat? Wait, Tim Robbins? Well, I guess Anthony Edwards, who played Goose, was his... Re- and he's taller than Tom Cruise for sure, because everyone is taller than Tom Cruise. But then when Merlin reemerges and he's like you'll get your rio when you get to the ship on his spe- very special mission at the end yeah then tim robbins but tim robbins practically speaking may probably wouldn't have fit in the jet probably not i mean he's like a good As what six six five and you said appropriately sized love interest were you kidding well in all of the silhouette shots and stuff there and there are definite times where they're standing next to each other and she's about his height or shorter Man, so it worked. Was it optical illusion? Kelly McGillis is a full 5'10". And when she put the coins in the jukebox at the end for their reunion, yeah, yeah, she was standing in a trench that they dug. No. Yeah, and uh, whenever they were standing together, he was wearing these special platform cowboy boots. No. And she was barefoot. (laughs) Because Paramount was super bugged by the height disparity. I it really worked. They did I mean, I was like, Oh yeah, they found a proportional love interest for Tom Cruise. She does look a little big on the bike. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> when they're macking on the bike, she's she looks like she's like a head taller than him, but I just thought it was, you know, their positioning on the bike. Which is hot. That's and hot and very eighties. I guess. Well didn't that happen in in Cool as Ice starring vanilla ice? Uh, I mean, what are the what are, what are the hot <laughs> motorcycle macking sessions? It was it was cool as ice and purple rain. Uh, if anybody has has seen those movies, then yeah, maybe they'd be yeah. It was like that. I I mean, oh. I'm just saying in general as a convention, motorcycles were like hot and dangerous and like cool in the 80s. Is that what Top Gun is? Hot, dangerous, and cool. It's definitely what it was going for. I am dangerous, ice man. <laughs> Maverick? What, did your parents not like you? And she knew. Oh, she was playing him. She was playing all dumb and stuff. and then, oh. But I mean, he didn't have all that much to be embarrassed. He won the song contest or whatever and got to sit with her. It's not like they did anything. She was in the bar with the all the aviators. What's going to happen? Well, you saw that there were other kind of floozy type, like... <laughs> floozy. There were definitely women who were there to meet, like, officers. And it was clear that she wasn't one of those. But you could see her. She goes, oh, you're a pilot? And she's, like, feigning this, like, interest and imp- and, and that she's impressed. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah. Especially because he's so self-consumed that, like, he wouldn't even notice that she's playing him. If you can't tell, I, like, really, re- like, read into and, and, and analyzed the pickup scene. But did you notice how weird and intimidating it almost was when he enters the women's restroom and then is like yes. all imposing and like blocking her in? Like he's like leaning all aggressively at the wall, on the wall. And that's what constitutes a ladies man, right? Yeah, yeah. Where he can corner you in the bathroom and like test the, the, the integrity of the counter for sex purposes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. This is, it's an 80, and I don't, I'm not excusing it, but it's like an 80s machismo thing. He wanted to fly below her hard deck. Wow. You made that up on your own. So how was this for opening scenes for you? Because there's a whole lot of Michael Bay style, lots of smoke and golden hour sunlight with jets taking off and stuff. 
but they open on a pretty heavy sequence before they even get to the Top Gun school. How did, how did this feel as the first scene goes? Yeah, very epic hand signals and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's a good tone setter. And this scene where the dude freaks out a little bit and has to be guided in, it sets up the themes for the entire movie. He was number one. He's a, he's a gifted pilot. He's a maverick. But he breaks the rules and he goes after cougars. <laughs> oh, you're talking about it's because of Maver- Maverick's unconventionalness that he freaks out the pilot who is number one. What was his name? Cougar. You missed my he goes after cougars joke. We're setting up Maverick as a dude who goes after cougars. Oh, because Kelly McGillis is older than him? Yeah. Okay, that was pretty. Uh, goes after cougar. I, I stand subtle. behind it. Very subtle. But I'm talking about something that's real. So he freaks out Cougar, and then Cougar, who was the number one pilot, drops out. And then Maverick and Goose can take his place. So it sets up a couple of things. The freak out and the stress that a pilot has to endure, especially when they've yeah, got he goes buggo. something to lose. Yeah, yeah, all like the Abyss style. Yep. Um, but it also sets up how you know Maverick lucks into things. Like, he's not your conventional first choice, and he doesn't even get into Top Gun school by being the best. He gets in on a fluke. Doesn't even win Top Gun. He's not Top Gun. Val Kilmer is very clearly Top Gun. But he does have, because of his performance, I guess, now he has, like, unfettered access to Top Gun. And he says he wants to be a teacher or an instructor. Like, what? And the dude is, like, incredulous. He's like, God help us. And by the dude, you mean Strickland? Strickland. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's got all the slacker. He's like, you're a slacker, Maverick. And he's like got slacker students who go on to do great things. <laughs> Actually, I don't know that Marty necessarily went on to do great things. Didn't Strickland, ever, didn't he ever have hair? <laughs> right. That's um, the joke. I've been obsessed with how good Tom Cruise looks, how well he's aged. But after spending two hours watching Top Gun from 1986 and then watching the trailer for Top Gun Maverick, I can finally see the, the difference. I can finally see the age catching up with him. And even that is two years old. But this one, he was dorkily young. Like he was, it, there was a, a number of factors. It was the tidy whities that went up to his belly button. <laughs> it was p- playing playing volleyball in jeans. <laughs> Kelly's like all into the oiled up volleyball. And she's still like, why is he playing in jeans? <laughs> because he had a hot date afterward. I guess, but I mean, who who like gets all sweaty and stuff and just throws on, like it's all hot in the sun and they're all glistening. And then he puts on his t-shirt and a bomber jacket and drives to her house and like <laughs> asks to take a shower. Who does that? <laughs> and then they, they talk and he tells them about the, the his dad and then they don't bone and he's like, he leaves to take a shower and she's like, where the hell are you going? Yeah. Why, so why, I thought when he said that he was going to go take a shower, I thought he was taking the liberty of taking it there, but then he... Right? Now that they've they've been through so much, now I'm going to take a shower whether you let me or not. Yeah, then he bounces. Is he like, was he triggered by something? I, I felt like he got sensitive about something that they were talking about. And he like fled because he was scared of intimacy or whatever. But really, it might have also been a game. Like he toys with her so much. Maybe because he's got his Napoleon complex, but also he had just spent the whole day playing gay volleyball and he wasn't feeling it anymore. You say gay volleyball, but I'm imagining that romantic comedy grin was plastered on Kelly's face during the volleyball scene. Uh, Well, it was a lot of laughing, especially when touchdown or whatever starts flexing and stuff. (laughs) Which is such a great moment. Touchdown. I guess. Was that his name? I have no idea. Hollywood? Game day. One of those. But it's a very subtle flex. He's not like bodybuilder flexing. He's like modern day flexing. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's just, not. Yeah, he's just like pumped and feeling it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's not doing a Gold's Gym. He's like doing like a, oh, uh, like a one person fist bump or something. <laughs> And and so, look, I remember Top Gun being more awkward in the flying and less awkward on the ground. It's difficult, especially in the 80s, 
to film some of this aerial footage. And they spent, you know, talk about the crazy amounts of money they spent on fuel and, and the exorbitant fees that the U.S. government charged for the Navy planes and for the aircraft use of the aircraft carrier and stuff. But looking back on it, you know, especially you see the top new Top Gun Maverick trailer and you're like, wow, this footage, the flying footage looks amazing. But it actually was better than I remember. There are some obvious cheats. Did you know that they were only allowed to fire two missiles? for the entirety of production, like legitimate dummy head missiles. Really? Because they fire at least two dozen, like in right. the Right. No, well, there's at least four shots of the of missiles fired. They just used as many camera angles as possible to cheat as oh, much. Oh, they recycled those missile fires. Yeah, and there were some really, really beautiful flying shots, though, where, where the MiGs are like spiraling in the air. It's like this this crazy elaborate dance or whatever, but everything on the ground to me felt awkward, Tom Cruise included. The love scene, I was cringing. The volleyball, and, and so I guess my point was everyone was like, Top Gun is like the gayest movie ever. And remember that gay volleyball scene? But even before that, they get super close and in each other's face, but not in like the confrontational, like we're about to fight kind of way now. Yeah, and there's also a lot of talk about like boners and turning each other on. There's so many boners and, and the, the coffee guy, he wants some butts. And uh... <laughs> he, does, he does want butts. I think he I think that means he wants butts in like detention centers or something. <laughs> I guess. But everyone was like, "Oh yeah, it's so homoerotic or whatever." And then I was like, "Yeah, but not really though. Like it's cuz it's Top Gun or whatever and it's a bunch it's a glimpse of dudes who will like hang out in the locker room when they're not flying and stuff. But it did feel sort of, sort of awkward and and like sexual tensiony throughout. And like Iceman gives him the teeth click thing and yeah, that's iconic too. Are you? Would you say that Top Gun is any more homoerotic than Jackass? <laughs> no, but they embrace it. And maybe Top Gun embraces it too, because they did talk a lot about carnal knowledge of a woman this time, and they're all making gay jokes like you do in the 80s or whatever. But uh, it read distinctly kind of intentional to me this time. Whereas Jackass, they're like laughing the whole time. This one was more serious, <laughs> if you can call Top Gun serious. That's a bit of a stretch. But like Jackass is rife with nut shots, but like full frontal dong. Yeah, no, I get it. And you love Jackass. Yeah, because kind of that's how dudes are. Like nut shots are a thing. Like pre-YouTube. <laughs> Why? YouTube probably like cut its teeth on nut shots. I'm not sure. I shot the goose in the nuts with an airsoft gun. I'm just saying we, we we don't need to sexualize every human contact or even further sexualize like boner and carnal knowledge talk. It's all about fronting. Yeah. So a lot of posturing and stuff. But, you know, when Goose dies, then it gets sad and it's very real, I guess. And Iceman like legitimately apologizes and they take a moment out of their rivalry. They're not really rivals. They're just competition and you know the opposite of Iceman's cool collected on the on the nose flying is not is contrary to Pete's Maverick ways. Yeah, I think they seem like they have more philosophical differences than anything. But do you know what a Rio is? Yeah, a Rio is a rear informed officer or something. <laughs> a re rear informed? Wow. Well, see, I did some research here. I looked up two definitions because I wanted to be hip to the tech talk. And MIG means M and G in Russian. The M and the G standing for the initials of the people who created the airplane. And Rio is radio intercept officer. Although Rios are now WSOs or something to that effect. Rios are no longer used and we're going to get an entirely new name for the backseat pilot in Top Gun Maverick. So did you look up why the tower calls him Ghost Rider when that is not his designation? No, tell me. Negative Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. That's the quote from the movie. But Ghost Rider is the name of the squadron that Maverick is a part of. Oh. And the actual Ghost Riders actually appear uh, in the film. But so that is the call sign for the squadron and his uh, individual call sign is Maverick. My question is, he doubly requests the flyby, both of which are denied in this movie. And then he gets busted down by Strickland, who wants to bust his butt multiple times before, like four tower flybys. So the question is, number one, why would you want to do a flyby? And why uh, would a flyby ever be approved? <laughs> I'd have to speculate, but 
I mean, it's their little, it's their way of saying hello. Is that like their victory lap or whatever? Yeah, exactly. Like why it would ever be approved. It seems really unsafe. So I can't imagine that it would ever be approved. But they actually did it for the movie. And Michael Ironside was in the tower. One of the times they buzzed the tower for filming. And he said the, the plane, the Tomcat was so close. He could see inside the cockpit. And it was one of the most impressive things he'd ever seen. Whoa, really? You don't even know, dude. Those jets, I mean, maybe you've been to air shows or something once in your life. But I went to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in like 2000 or something. And I was like, I don't want to go to the speed. I don't care. And then you come out onto the track and you're up against the fence and you hear the cars and they're going around and then they come close to you. And it was the loudest thing I'd ever heard. Like it shook my bones. I felt it in my teeth when those dozens of cars went by. It was incredible. And they're going what? 200 miles per hour? I'm not sure, but it's just, it's thunderous in a way that was astounding to me. Well, these jets, I mean, if I heard correctly, they they talk about 800 miles per hour. Like, oh, you know, he's approaching blah, 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 like 800 miles per hour. I'm like, what? Yeah, enough to rock your coffee, man. <laughs> What's the speed of sound? Speed of sound is like 760 miles per hour, something a little bit over that. But I guess it's also dependent on the weather conditions. Uh, but I didn't see any sonic booms. You yeah. know, you could see the kind of burst of air around the, the aircraft. I didn't see right. those in this movie. But right. the Tomcats are capable of that. But even the cars, obviously, they weren't going anywhere near that speed. But you can check out what I'm talking about in Top Gun 2, a.k.a. Days of Thunder, which was just Top Gun in Cars. <laughs> Starring Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, Days of Thunder. How does it just not? Who who directed Days of Thunder? Also Tony Scott. Why doesn't Days of Thunder have the same classic or cult status as Top Gun? Because it wasn't. It was like Speed Two Cruise Control. It's like we're on a bus going fast. Now we're on a cruise ship, probably going faster, but you can't tell. So it I plays mean, Kelly McGillis the, with Nicole Kidman. Yeah. yeah. Then the cars are fast and it shot really cool. Tony Scott kind of became the preeminent uh, action-y kind of director for the 80s, late 80s, and early 90s. So it was fun. It was Days of Thunder was a good movie. It's just it all comes down to how hick they are when they climb out of the car or out of the plane. That pilot or that driver swagger. I think, I think yep. with Days of Thunder, you know, you don't get all the dress uniform stuff. Well, you definitely get those stupid uniforms with the Tide logos and stuff. <clears throat> The With jumpsuits. The, yeah, exactly. It's more Costco and Tide and Jujube sponsorship as opposed to like dress whites. Jujubes, like the candy? Yeah, I don't know. That was probably a bad <laughs> example. But the dress whites seem to add a certain amount of gravity to what they're doing. Oh, women love that shit. They do? Yeah. And then the gay dudes too. Isn't like the prime gay costume like the sailor outfit? <laughs> Sexy sailor. Yeah, I guess. I'm just reading now that the real Top Gun school imposes a $5 fine to any staff member who quotes the film. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody talks it talks about it. The Navy used this movie at, and continues to, I'm sure, as a recruitment tool. Their marketing videos for the time had a very Danger Zone-esque kind of guitar riff. And apparently for the big theaters, they actually positioned Navy recruitment stations outside the theater. So dudes would come out all pumped up and be like, I want to fly planes. I think their membership or their enrollment jumped like 500%. Oh, yeah, this is a great recruiting tool. And as such, the Navy kind of kept real control. Cougar, as opposed to landing on his flight, you know, on the deck safely and washing out and going home to his wife and kids, was supposed to die in a fiery wreck trying to land the plane. And uh, Navy was like, no, we, we don't want like the planes to crash and burn and stuff. So uh, it doesn't look good for the people we want to sign up. Goose also was supposed to die uh, differently, but they were like, no, it's going to be a malfunction. That's not his fault or whatever. Did you know the crew member, like a, pilot, a stunt pilot actually died in production of this movie? No, that's awful. I guess it was in the flat spin. He was like 56 or whatever and, and crashed. They never found him or the plane in, over the water. How does, a, how does a production survive something like that? I don't know because it's war out there. That's really sad. Not, not that Tom Cruise was deterred who like inverted helicopters and did all kinds of crazy junk in the Mission Impossibles. <laughs> the turd? The turd. You say, <laughs> oh, deterred. <laughs> yeah, Tom Cruise is the turd. <laughs> I 
was like, what does that mean? Yeah, but you know when he, you know when Maverick is a turd in this movie. Who when? when Goose dies and he finally musters up the teary-eyed, trembly-lipped courage to confront Meg Ryan or to go to her. Yeah. And she like throws her arms around him in true Meg Ryan fashion, and he doesn't return the hug. It's like hug her back, Aww. you turd. He was dealing with his own grief, but that's so Maverick, right? Unable to one completely self-consumed. Right? It's about his grief, not hers. She's even oddly consoling him. It's so bizarre. And two, like to not be able to express his emotion fully. Like that's all in character for Maverick. Yeah. And even you know, I'm not saying it's not turd behavior. I'm just saying. <laughs> so what do you expect from Top Gun Maverick? Um, I'm hoping for better choreographed and directed and more accessible and realistic flight sequences. Like, it's like, I wonder if they're going to play volleyball again. Like, is he going to have, like, eyes for this lady the whole time or whatever? Nobody cares. You want to see the Jets. That's what I'm expecting and hoping for. Because Top Gun is a aerial combat movie and cool with the jets and got the berlin side of it but i'm talking about the kenny Loggins danger zone side of it like dan to dan like graduate top gun and now it's the real world son this ain't no country club this ain't no disco this is la and they're like flying around and stuff the ending it was tacked on like true lies where they're like congratulations guys got a real world situation it's a crisis you graduated but you got to go out and fly it's the real thing now right the discussion for true lies available now at or whatever movies.com right and he's like talk to me goose what's goose supposed to say to him <laughs> goose is supposed to say is like hey mav like merlin screaming at him in the back seat let's <laughs> come on what are you doing mav that's what goose is gonna say but whatever yeah. he checks in spiritually in the sky and they have a cool fight and the migs are cool and there's a sun glinting off the cockpit canopies and stuff and it's like damn shooting stuff and he's like i'm hitting and despite the fact that it's called top gun they never once the american Americans never once fire their guns. Yeah, only in like simulation, but it's 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 the MIGs otherwise that that actually fire their tracer gun bullet things. That's the technical So that's term. what I <laughs> that's what I'm expecting. I'm sure there will be drama and intrigue and such because it shows it in the trailer, but let's fly and be cool stuff and by all accounts Tom Cruise, you know, we should talk about that movie. Like when it comes out, we should review it. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to how the technology can bring, can create an even more immersive, you know, experience. I'm not expecting like soaring over California, but like <laughs> it, it's probably, I think the tech is going to make the flight and aerial stuff stunt work really cool. So I'm stoked about that. But really, yeah. I just hope that it delivers on its own storyline. You know, it's not like a, just a like two hour fan service film, like trading off of all the Top Gun, you know, beloved stuff but you know that it's used and incorporated like appropriately i really hope that it stands on its own i've heard rumors of like performances of a lifetime or like tom cruise's performance of a lifetime which i hope is just not setting me up for disappointment with 36 years of anticipation plus the two years that we've been in limbo about this movie coming out like i'm just really hoping it pays off yeah performance of a lifetime because we've waited a lifetime to see it you know certified fresh coming out in theaters. So obviously recording this discussion in advance of the theatrical release of Top Gun Maverick. That's our discussion on Top Gun from 1986. Wait, we got to give our reviews. And your rating, please. A, a cooler movie than I remembered, technically speaking, way more awkward than I remembered. It's an all right movie for sure. Um, I actually had fun watching Top Gun, but kind of awkward. Really? And in, in such a way that it actually took it down from a totally? Because it's kind of a totally movie. Top Gun has never been my super favorite movie, which it was for a lot of kids my age. I don't know. I was much more about Back to the Future and Terminator 2 and stuff and Batman. Well, that's fair. Top Gun was a obvious good for me, a joy to rewatch, especially in anticipation of Top Gun Maverick and fun to talk about. So we hope you enjoyed this discussion. Please subscribe to our podcast, wherever you get podcasts. Please send us a message, 818-835-0473 or whatever movies at gmail.com on Instagram and Twitter at or whatever movies. Wes, any other ways that people can like or support us? No. All right. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.